Hello everyone, so I have been riding the Brooks C67 for about uh, a little more than a week now on my daily commuting bike and uh, the sad truth about this review is that by the end of the review I will be unpacking the saddle, put it in a box and return back to Brooks, England. Um, here, let me tell you why this saddle did not work for me, okay? So at the initial review I did, uh, you know, last week, uh, I was really excited to receive the saddle because it's specifically targeted at, you know, more upriding position uh, of a rider type uh, for us cyclists. And also the saddle is, according to them, the widest available in the Brooks lineup of the cabium saddles. Also, they advertised as instantly comfortable. The moment you sit on there, it's supposed to be riding like through the cloud. So those are the reasons that I bought the saddle and the reasons that I suspect might work pretty good during my initial review. However, um, during my week of riding, the saddle has been nothing but uncomfortable at, at best. Um, so the, also there are a few issues with the saddle, first being that the plastic mount on the saddle, which I'll show you guys, the plastic mounting point over here uh, that connects to this metal bar, which you're gonna mount onto your seat post, of course, it's actually moving around and it's creaking, it's creating a lot of noise. So it's definitely, at the very beginning, I thought, you know, something wrong with the saddle, but then I realized it is just how the way the saddle was designed. It's, it's creaking. You can even hear it right now. Can you hear that? So the two, like the two parts over here are not actually secured or glued. Um, the plastic, um, the bracket is not glued onto the rail. So there's actually quite a lot of free play on the, rail, on the top when you're riding and you're trying to, you know, rock around during your riding sessions, which creates this horrible, horrible free play that you, you definitely is gonna feel it when you get the saddle and you start riding it. Um, so that's one thing I immediately not liking. Uh, the second thing is they advertise the comfort. So I think maybe the, when they said it's instantly comfortable, it's more for people who wear those very short, tight, riding pants with thick pads, okay? Uh, which looks really silly, really, if you are doing daily commuting morning and night. I just usually wear my jeans and, you know, and my regular underwear and go to work. Nobody have time to put on those really tight, super sexy short pants for the riding. But if you wear your regular jeans and if you wear like a kind of a, um, like your, your underwear, your underwear, sits right under your butt. So when you actually sit on this saddle, which is made of rubber, more hard than the original saddle that it came with, the edge of the underwear actually cuts through into your skin and it feels really uncomfortable. Uh, to a point that I was like, why the heck am I riding this? I should just go back to my original saddle initially. <laughs> okay. Um, and also again, when I mentioned it's designed with people who wear those, you know, racing padded pants by default, those padded pants are really thick and you usually don't wear any underwears under it. So when you, when you wear those, of course, I must I assume that it's gonna be really comfortable on this saddle, but if you just wear regular jeans, trust me, it's not comfortable at all. The moment your sit bone touches the, you know, back part of the saddle, that's when you're gonna feel like, oh, horrible. I'm never want to sit on this again. So basically, the saddle still is designed for more of a aggressive riding position, okay? So it's, it's more for you if you're riding like this. The moment that you sit straight up, your bone is gonna feel this saddle, like it's, it feels like a really hard wall. So it's really, really, really uncomfortable, okay? When you sit straight up. And for that, I actually have to adjust my position of the saddle, I have to lower my handlebar on my uh, Daehong folding bike 
you just get into a more slightly more aggressive riding position because with my original upright position, this saddle instantly uncomfortable, okay? It's not instantly comfortable. It's very uncomfortable because your sit bone, the moment it hits over here, it's gonna hurt really bad. So my kind of, during this week of test ride, my alternative is I really just have to really sit like more forward where my sit bone is not like straight sitting on top, which, which creates this really horrible, hard feeling on my sit bone. Um, so those are the two, really two important points that just made me decide that I'm not even gonna put this on my road bike to test anymore because my road bike saddle is also a stock seat, which is also very comfortable. There's no complaint on the seat, really. I got this because it, only because it looked cooler and I thought it might be more comfortable than my really stock saddle, which probably doesn't worth more than $20. This saddle is $120, okay? So in the end, the saddle is really not comfortable for me and I am a just the average daily cyclist commuter. I wear my regular jeans and pants. Um, so a, my, my reason of being uncomfortable might be very different from yours. Maybe you're looking at this saddle and you are a weekend warrior, you're a casual rider that you don't really ride your bikes to work. So you can always put on your super tight shorts and your very padded cycling pants. For that reason, this saddle should be really comfortable. It doesn't matter of your seating position, whether it's more upright or like coming forward. With padding on your butt, this saddle is comfortable, okay? But without padding, if you're just riding daily to work on a regular jean, no, these are definitely not comfortable at all. And the build quality again, those free play is really unacceptable. Like even my really cheap saddle, it's, I mean, it's also plastic mount, but there's no free play at all on my cheap saddle, but there's free play right off the bat. First day of riding, it's, it's gotten loose. So I don't really know what's going on with Brooks uh, or if, you know, something wrong with their quality control maybe, or they're just in a hurry to push out this product, but, um, my honest opinion, it's, it's not very comfortable. Is it worth $120? Probably not. Um, the, in the conclusion, I'm gonna just sum up the good and the bad. So the good thing about this saddle, foremost, it looks just, it looks, I think it's the best looking, you know, commuter saddle, upright riding saddle you can find. It really looks fantastic, it looks streamlined, very slim profile and it's not terribly heavy, okay? So really the look is fantastic. Another plus side is if you do, if you really not using this for commuting, if you use this for casual riding and you have a pair of really thick padded pants, this saddle is comfortable. So um, you could definitely make this saddle your home when you sit on your bike, okay? Um, so those are the two plus sides of the saddle. The third plus side is it's weatherproof compared to the regular Brooks England leather saddles. It's weatherproof, so it doesn't matter if you, you know, riding the rain, you don't have to worry about bringing an extra waterproof cover for your Brooks leather saddle, uh, which I always do with my other Brooks leather saddles, okay? But not with this one. Uh, it actually was sitting in the rain for a couple of days um, when I was riding um, in the Jersey, uh, between Jersey and New York. Okay, I ride on the George Washington Bridge, okay? So those are the three reasons that I think if you can accept those, um, you should get this saddle. Now onto the downside. The build quality is questionable because there are significant of free play on the saddle the first day I started riding. Second thing is if you wear regular jeans and you commute on this, it's not gonna be comfortable if you sit very upright. This is still more designed for a less upright riding position. Um, the third thing is it's very costly. It's $120. My whole bike is a little more than you know $400. Um, that came with a instantly comfortable saddle, <laughs> right? So um, those are the cons. If you can, if you can live with the cons and if you can avoid those cons, 
Uh, I think this is still a good saddle, you know, to own because it's very unique. Nobody else is making a saddle look like this. Besides those reasons, I would advise you to just stay away from this saddle, okay? It's, um, it's, to me, it's more like a gimmick than a everyday tool for your commuting bike, okay? So if you guys have any questions or comments um, about the Brox saddle, or if you have a Brox saddle, the C67, and you think you disagree with me, definitely let me know in the comment section down below. Um, at this point, I'm gonna stick with my really cheap and really comfortable stock saddle from, uh, from day home, okay? And now onto the part of removing it off my bike. So one last look at the Brox C67. Um, a really nice try. I mean, they really did design this saddle to make it look really, really good, okay? Um, but in the end, okay, let me show you guys another thing. So the rail is, is a plastic coated metal. So the plastic part has already uh, chipped away from me tightening the saddle which is sad um, and it doesn't look any good at all. So yeah, that's another thing that I found that's kind of weird. And uh, so I'm gonna end my review over here and uh, pack it up and return back to Brooks. If you guys have any questions about this uh, C67 saddle or if you, are disagreeing with, if you are disagreeing with me and you think this saddle is the most comfortable saddle in the world, uh, feel free to let me know in the comments section down below. I would love to know your feedback as well. And because I know this is a fairly new product and not many people have it, um, I shared my opinion. I hope you can share yours to let other people who are interested know to also know what they think about this saddle, okay? So thanks again and uh, I will see you in the next video. Take care.